may approach the witness quickly. Just My name is John Clifford Floyd III. Say, good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you uh, tell the court, um, are you currently retired? Yes, I am. And uh, prior to uh, being retired, uh, can you tell the court a little bit about, uh, did you work in the, the legal uh, career? I'm, Were you a lawyer? I was an attorney. I practiced law. I've probably tried a thousand cases. Uh, about 50% of my practice was criminal law, 25% of it was uh, family law, and the rest was whatever walked through the front door had, could pay for it. Okay. And um, could we wait one second? Governor's come back. He might have I do. Uh, my calendar shows it was October 26, 2021. All right. And would defense counsel accept that as a stipulation or? To, is there any follow-up questioning needed on that? Mr. Barnes is still uh, considered under oath on this point. All right. I'll just look for a show of hands or for someone to speak now on Zoom and hearing none. Thank you, sir. You're excused. And, um, sir, can you uh, tell the court, are you from Atlanta? No. I grew up in uh, South Central Los Angeles. Uh, I spent uh, most of my legal career I would say in Washington, D.C. was kind of the circle, but I've tried cases all over the country, and I tried the longest. Uh, I was the first uh, lawyer to try an international criminal court. I was with the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. I was in trial there for four and a half years in Arusha, uh, Tanzania, and Hague in the Netherlands. Okay. And when, when you weren't there, it sounds like your kind of center of gravity was Washington, D.C.? Correct, but I've tried cases in West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, Florida, I mean, California. All yes. over. Yes. And uh, do you, uh, sir, can you tell the court, uh, do you have any children? <laughs> I have one daughter, uh, Fonnie Willis. Okay. And um, I want to direct your attention uh, back to 2019, okay? Uh, yes. Back in 2019, uh, can you tell the court, uh, did you move uh, here to Atlanta? I was living in uh, Johannesburg, South, uh, South Africa. Um, and unfortunately, for some reasons, I could not get an extended visa. When I retired from the practice of law in 2018, I moved to South Africa. And uh, I had to leave South Africa. And I did then come to Atlanta. Okay, and do you, sir, uh, remember about uh, the time period uh, in 2019 uh, when you uh, moved in with your daughter here in Atlanta? It would have been the spring or summer of 2019. And um, after you moved here, um, did you uh, get a driver's license to kind of confirm your residency in yeah. Atlanta? <laughs> well, <laughs> my driver's license for the District of Columbia was going to expire on my birthday, which is in October. And yes, I did get a license here in uh, the state of uh, Georgia. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Good. Okay. okay, Your Honor, would you, if you don't mind, I'm, my eyes are very bad, which is one of the reasons I retired, and so I need um, a magnifying glass, so I'll be Whatever constantly playing. Thank you. Yes, I, I see it was issued on 9 2019 Okay. So before we get there, um, do you uh, do you recognize State Exhibit 2? Yes, just my driver's license. Okay. And um, is State Exhibit 2 a fair and accurate copy of your uh, physical driver's license? Absolutely. Uh, this time around, the state would tender what's been marked as State Exhibit 2 into evidence? No question. Uh, seeing no other objections, it's admitted. State Exhibit 2 is admitted for the record. <laughs> now, uh, Ms. Uh, and for the record, Your Honor, um, the state is going to supplement State Exhibit 2 with a redacted copy of the license. Um, the current copy is not redacted with the address and things of that nature. Right. Do we need to mark that differently in any way? I will mark it as State Exhibit 2A. Perfect. Uh, now, you talked about when your driver's license uh, was issued. Can you tell the court um, when was that driver's license here 
uh, your Georgia driver's license issue? It was uh, on uh, on nine twenty eight twenty nineteen. Okay, so September twenty eighth twenty nineteen. Now, when you moved into um, District Attorney Willis's home, um, who lived there? Well, my da daughter lived there. I lived there. And from time to time, uh, our grandchildren would, uh, my grandchildren would, would come. Okay. And uh, did your grandchildren, were they at school coming and going? As exactly. Uh, I think um, they were in school in various uh, jurisdictions. And during the time, how long did you live um, at or with Miss Willison um, at her home here uh, in Fulton County? She was forced to move after she was elected about, I mean, I don't know if you want me to go through the whole thing, but that, uh, Your Honor, if Your Honor will indulge me. Um, after she was sworn in, she was sworn in on January 1 of uh, 2021. And on or about the 3rd of February, um, at probably 5, 5.30 a.m. in the morning, um, there were people outside her house uh, cursing and yelling and calling her the B word and the N word and just, I mean, it was it, bizarre, okay? I mean, it just. Sorry, it's pause, pause, sir. <laughs> Mr. Abani, here's the objection to you. Well, he, I would say it's effect on listener. I mean, he was present while all of these things were occurring, but I can. No, no, I, that's, and he's saying he was personally present to hear these things? Yes. Okay, overall. Okay, and um, fortunately, the neighbors uh, called the police and uh, disbanded, uh, you know, disbanded the group. And, you know, it was just, uh, I mean, it was just, I hadn't seen anything exactly like it before. Okay, and after that happened, uh, can you tell uh, the court um, that Ms. Willis would have to move from her home? Yes, she was forced to, to leave. And um, can you tell the court, uh, after she was forced to leave, uh, shortly after she was uh, sworn in, uh, did you remain at her, her home in Fulton County? Yes, I stayed there uh, really until uh, 2022, I guess. And um, from what you described, uh, did you fear for her safety? Absolutely. I mean, um, not only did I do that, I mean, the uh, South uh, Fulton police uh, they had they brought somebody a man with a dog because there have been so many death threats uh, uh, and they said they were going to blow up the house they were going to kill her they were going to kill me they were going to kill my grandchildren I mean on and on and on it just uh, it became and I was concerned for her safety and um, after those concerns came to your your attention and after what you heard and saw uh, that that day uh, you remained at the house yes and can you tell the court um, with what you just described, why did you remain uh, living at Ms. Uh, the district attorney's home here in Fulton County? Mr. Buck, I believe it's relevant based on uh, a lot of the questions that were asked yesterday of Ms. Willis as to um, about the security threat and the fact that um, it was implied that those threats were not necessarily um, real in the sense that Mr. Uh, Boyd remained in the home. There were many questions about the fact that he remained and her children uh, could still come and go to the house. I think it's relevant based to the testimony that was elicited from defense counsels uh, yesterday. Well, these um, South Fulton police, first they put a car in front of the house that was there permanently, um, a police car. That was thing one. Thing two, they brought a person uh, with a dog sometimes more than uh, once a day, twice a day, and they would circle the house to look for, for bombs. Um, I knew that that was a house that my daughter had worked for, for. It was a brand new house. She's the only one who would ever live there. It's a four bedroom, brand new house. And I wanted to, somebody needed to protect the house. And I stayed there to basically take care of the house, uh, to take care of the yard, to take care that also somebody sprayed um, um, again the B word and the N word on the house, and uh, I don't think my daughter even knew that. Uh, I cleaned it off and called the police, and 
South uh, Fulton Police. They have, I'm sure, all the records of all the things that happened. And all of the neighbors, uh, I notified all the neighbors to look out and to watch out. And it was just, it was so crazy. I mean, it was just so crazy. We'd have people would show up and, and park car. There was a guy parked for probably eight hours out in front of the, the house. Uh, you know, it was just, and we'd call the police and, you know. Now, uh, at the time that you uh, lived there with Ms. Willis, and um, I guess even when you remained, so during the time period of 2019 to uh, the end of uh, 2020, uh, are you aware um, if Ms. Willis uh, was dating someone? Yeah, she, she did. She had, she had a boyfriend when I first got there. And uh, did you meet uh, her boyfriend? Yeah, I met him often. Okay, and can you, did you know him by any specific uh, specific nickname? Yeah, Deuce. Okay, and okay. can you tell the court um, why you were living there? Um, how often would you see him? Sometimes every day, sometimes, you know, every other day. He uh, 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 was a disc jockey or something, and he had all this paraphernalia that, that I'd have to move out. It was a, you know, a thing with the keyboard, I mean, uh, things that play music and so forth and so on. So. Now, when you moved in uh, in 2019 and then throughout the years uh, in uh, your 2020, 2021, had you ever um, met someone named Nathan Wade? I did not meet Nathan Wade until 2023, about a year ago when a reporter by the name of Isakoff interviewed me. I met him. That was the first time I had met him. You said that was in 2023? 2023, right. And I know you said you hadn't met him uh, until uh, 2023, but when you were living at um, Ms. Willis's house in Fulton County, uh, did you ever meet Mr. Wade in uh, the year 2019? Absolutely not. How about in the year 2020? Absolutely not. Did you ever see Mr. Wade at Miss uh, Willis's uh, Fulton County House in the year two, uh, 2021? Never. And is it your testimony that the <coughs> only time or the first time uh, that you met Mr. Wade was in uh, 2023? Let me say something. Mr. Wade said that he remembers seeing me, and I do remember some banter. I, I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, and there's kind of this thing that goes on between fraternities, and Mr. Wade is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha, and, they, you know, so they, I do remember there was some kind of banter when my daughter was sworn in to be district attorney between me and a couple of guys, and he said he remembers me. I don't remember him. And um, prior to uh, that experience that you're talking about, uh, as well as, uh, I guess, your official meeting in 2023, had you ever even heard his name? No, never. I don't think I have any further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Merchant. Yes, thank you, Justice. Fine, how are you, counsel? Good, thank you. Just got a couple questions. Um, on Monday, we heard you were in California. Do you have a place in California? <laughs> People always ask me about where do I live. I guess I'm, I live right here at sitting in this seat right now. But yes, the answer is I have a place in Los Angeles. Okay, you do. All right. Uh, so, do you share time or split time no, between Los Angeles and Georgia? Actually, I'm working on a documentary film, and I'm supposed to be being filmed, not for this trial, but I'm supposed to be being filmed right now. It was planned, and we had to stop it because they asked me to come here. But um, the the answer is I'm working on a documentary, and um, I'll be in California until I finish the documentary if we don't have another actor strike and we don't have an, another writer strike. So do you, you own property in California? No, now? I don't. I live with a, a friend of mine. You live with a friend of yours. Okay. Yeah. And when did you first move? Um, well, let me let me qualify with the dates. Did you spend any time in 2019 in California? No, and the reason I didn't is that when I first came here, the answer is no, I did not. What happened was COVID. Once COVID hit, um, that, uh, I mean, I was just paralyzed. I couldn't go anyplace. I couldn't, 
go anything. I mean, I'm a theater buff. I used to go to the theater at least once a week. But when COVID hit, I just couldn't. I couldn't go to the dentist, which I need to do. Or, you know, I just, uh, it was just a thing. So I was just stuck. I was just stuck there. I may be wrong, but I believe COVID hit in 2020. So I was asking about 2019. In 2019, did you spend any time in California? Before COVID was even here in the United States, remember I lived in South Africa and I've traveled the world. I knew COVID was coming before. I knew COVID was around before. They may have announced it in, in 20, but in fact, I knew about it and I knew what was happening uh, in 19. Okay, so so let's let's walk through 2019 then. You said you moved here in September. So no, I didn't say that. I moved here probably prior to September. In September is when I got the driver's license. I probably moved in the springtime. I'm sorry, you did. You said spring summer. I see that in my notes. Um, so spring summer 2019 is when you moved here. So up until spring summer 2019, where did you live? I lived in Johannesburg. Well. I lived in Washington, D.C., 2018. I had planned to retire for the rest of my life in South Africa. I had worked for uh, Nelson Mandela and the Free Mandela and getting that, and someone I'd gone to law school, he had located there after Mandela was freed from prison and became president. I was going to live there for the rest of my life, but unfortunately, because of political reasons, I could not stay in South Africa, and I was forced, in a sense, to come back to the United States. Okay. So let's just focus in on the period from, let's see, let's, let's just start with October 2019, okay? We'll call that the relevant period. October 2019 until the end of 2019. Were you in Georgia every single day of that year? Absolutely. Okay. So now let's move to 2020. Okay. And every single day, before I move on, every single day in 2019, you slept at your daughter's house, correct? That's correct. Okay. So let's start in 2020. All right. So 2020, the entire year, did you travel anywhere? No. Okay. You didn't travel at all that year? Not, no. So, and I didn't go to the movies, which upset me also. Um, so that entire year, 2020, you remained here in Georgia? Right. Okay. In 2021, did you do any traveling? No. So when did you move back, or when did you start this documentary film in Los Angeles? <laughs> what I had been doing uh, to occupy my time was I was writing my own memoir. Uh, as I delved into my family background, I discovered something, and that's what got me to working on the documentary. So I want you to understand what was going on in my uh, uh, life. Um, I pitched my I have a movie script called Bad Blood. Uh, I have a movie script we're trying to sell. So I tried to sell that. And I just happened to mention something that happened during the civil rights movement. Uh, SNCC, um, um, it's called the SNCC Five. Uh, the uh, legendary uh, Peter Fitzsimmons uh, was interested. And so uh, with Peter Fitzsimmons and Leah Smith, uh, we're now doing the documentary. So. I, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but... I what I was asking was when you moved to Los Angeles, not what you moved there for. Well, you keep saying moved. Um, I haven't moved to Los Angeles. I spent more time in California, in Oakland, if you really want to just be, because uh, Peter uh, is basically San Francisco based. So we're working on the documentary. Okay. Um, I was in Los Angeles because I was going to the Pan-African <coughs> Film Festival. And that's why we were there. And the way Hollywood works is, you know, when you make connections and film festivals are a place to try to sell ideas and meet people and organize things. Um, you still own property in Washington, D.C., correct? No, no I, I don't. You don't own property at 1467 Roxana Road Northwest? That's where I used to live. That's where you used to live. Did right. you own that property? Yes. Okay. And um, you owned that property when you moved here in 2019? Yes. And you owned it in 2020, correct? Well, <laughs> that were you now you talk about a very complicated issue. I left the property. There was a dispute between me and I had gotten a reverse mortgage company. And uh, there was a dispute between me and the diver that. And I just, uh, I walked away from it. Okay. You walked away from it with... 
almost $300,000. Yeah, what is the relevance of that? Um, where he lived and registered to vote. That's what they brought in. So that's why is the money he got from the sale I, I, relevant at all? Um, it's the only proof I have of that he owned that address. So I can move on though. Right. Okay. Um, when did you sell that property? I didn't. The reverse mortgage company took it. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so in 2019, when you but when you got your driver's license here, yes. the next day you registered to vote, correct? I think it may have been the same day, but maybe it was the next day. I don't remember. But you didn't own property here in Georgia that day? No, I was living uh, with my daughter. Okay. Um, you said that you met Mr. Wade, that you remember you met in 2023, right? <coughs> that was the first time you Correct. remember? Okay. And, and I wasn't really clear. You said something about meeting him. Was it with Mr. Isakoff or did Mr. Isakoff tell you? No, I was being interviewed by Mr. Isakoff. Okay. Okay. Um, and he walked in, and I, I met him. That was the first time. He, he, he walked into the office. and Where were you being interviewed? At the district attorney's office. And Mr. Wade walked into that interview? Yes. And um, so, you're, so Ms. Willis had not told you about Mr. Wade prior to that? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. So she didn't tell you anything about their relationship before you met him that day? No. Um, but Mr. Wade remembers meeting you in 2020? He said that at my daughter's swearing in, I do remember that we having some banner about fraternities, but other than that. Oh, at your daughter's swearing in, okay. Right. That's all I have, just one moment. Nothing else, thank you. Morning, sir. Good morning. How are you, counsel? I'm fine. Um, I'll try to ask you some specific questions if we could, okay? And I'll give specific <laughs> answers if I can. Perfect. Okay. The driver's license address, I'm not going to publish. That is state's exhibit number two. But is the address on that driver's license the home that you're referring to as your daughter's in South Fulton? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> it was unclear to me. Maybe no one else, but it's unclear to me. When did you stop living at what I would call your daughter's home in South Fulton? Things got so bad and threats got so many, even against uh, me, that the house became basically uninhabitable. Um, you know, I got tired of sleeping in one room one day and no one that I would say December of uh, of uh, 2022 something like that December so, of 2022 right that's that's about right yeah now let me change and go back for another date you had indicated and I didn't hear it when was your daughter Miss Willis when was she sworn in as district attorney on January 1 2021 okay and did you indicate that there was an incident, and I know you've described it. Was that incident on February the 3rd, 2021? That's my best recollection. <clears throat> okay. So my question then is, after February 3rd of 2021, how much longer did Miss Willis stay at the house before she moved somewhere else? A very short period of time, and I cannot be precise, but I would bet all the money I ever made, uh, it wouldn't, wasn't more than a month and a half, if that long. Okay, so we're talking about best of your recollection, end of February into the beginning of March, give or take, of 2021, when Miss Willis would have moved to a different location. Exactly. Okay. And did Miss Willis return to the house, that is, the house that you were in, at any point in time that you can remember? From time to time, she and her security might show up for her to pick something up or take something or something. Okay. But she always would be come with her security. Okay. My question was poorly worded. I apologize. Did she come back permanently to her house? Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely so, not. So as far as you're, you're aware, that once Miss Willis left the house, her house, South Fulton House, so the record's clear, uh, in either late February or into to March of 2021, best of your recollection she's not returned to that home to live no she, no it uh, it uh, it became uninhabitable um i mean it just you know i mean 
That's okay. I would ha have to walk around that house looking out of every window. Um, I'd ha I had I made a, a habit of having to walk around the whole house. I got lights so that if somebody would come at night in the back, so that those kinds of you know, reflecting lights, I, I had those put up. Uh, I, you I, know, I don't you know, mean to again, to yeah, you off. Okay. All I was interested in is whether she had ever returned. No, the answer is no. Okay. Now, when Miss Willis, when your daughter left the home, time period, end of February, beginning of March, give or take, 2021, do you know where she moved to? No, and I didn't want to know. I intentionally did not want to know because I was not, you know, if somebody stuck a gun to my head and I could tell them I wasn't going to tell them anyway or I'd have made up something, but I didn't want to know. Okay, so would it be fair to say that if you didn't want to know, you never visited her at the place that she moved to? Oh, I never did. Never did? N never did. Okay. Do you know how long she stayed at the first place that she went to after she left her house before she moved to a second place? What I know, and this is hearsay, Counsel, uh, is that my daughter has had to move something like four times. But do you know any potential? No, I don't know any, any place. I was taken one time for Christmas Day. I've only seen my daughter, and this is very hard for me to say, but during the period my daughter left, I've only seen my, my daughter 13 times. Because I can't, and we've never seen each other more than maybe three hours because of, you know, the nightmare threats against uh, her and me. And I, and I understand that. And, and from the perspective of being a father myself, I understand what that means. So I'm going to move away from that. I was just trying to get an idea of date-wise, okay? So let me try to get one more date. In 2023, when you were being interviewed by one of the gentlemen that wrote the book at the DA's office, and Mr. Wade came in. Can you give us, other than 2023, what the date would be? I'm sorry, I can't, Counsel. How about spring, summer, <coughs> any idea? I would guess spring or summer, uh, but I, I, I can't. Okay. I don't. I'm sorry. And you've already indicated, at least to your recollection, that was the first time that you'd met Mr. Wade. Oh, absolutely. Okay. That, I'm not, not arguing with you about that. I want to go to Ms. Willis's boyfriend that you referenced. Okay. You met Ms. Willis' boyfriend, as you've characterized it, when you came here in 2019. Correct. And you met him uh, on one occasion, several occasions? Oh, uh, no, I saw him often. Oh, so you mean there was no secret that she was dating this man? Not from me. Not from you. And not, he was, a, again, he was a disc jockey of some kind. I think he had a government job during the day. I don't know what it was, but... Uh, apparently, uh, he would uh, do weddings and so forth and so on. He was a disc jockey, played music. So he had all his, all his stuff was always in the way, and I was always having to try to push it aside. And, you know, anyway. But, Ms. Wilson, your daughter didn't keep him from you, correct? No. No, I mean, there was no doubt he... I mean, we lived in... My daughter and I lived in the same house. I mean, I, you know, it, he came and went, you know. Right. Um... Now, when did you learn that your daughter had a romantic personal relationship with Mr. Wade? Well, about seven weeks ago when it, as a matter of fact, I, uh, uh, I, I just found out when other folks found out. Okay? But, that is, your daughter, as I understand it, never told you one time in the year of 2022 that she was dating Mr. Wade, correct? That's correct. Uh, and until recently, you didn't know from anyone, including your daughter, that she dated Mr. Wade, correct? That's correct. That is, whatever the relationship is between father and daughter, uh, she kept that a secret from you, correct? Correct. That's all I need to know. Mr. Stockton. No. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Correct. Yeah. Good morning, Counsel. When your daughter moved or left the house that she owned, did did she say anything to you about having a large uh, savings of cash? Oh no, she. Oh no. See, 
maybe, excuse me, and I, Your Honor, I'm not trying to be racist, okay? But it's a black thing, okay? You know, I was trained, and most black folks, they hide cash or they keep cash. And uh, I was, no, I train, you always keep some cash because uh, I've been places, and just because of the color of my skin, for example, I took a fellowship at Harvard when my daughter was just, uh, uh, if I might, Your Honor, if I might, when I was just, uh, she was just, you know, maybe three years old. And I remember going to a restaurant in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I had a American Express credit card and maybe a visa or whatever. And uh, I had a lot of um, what they call traveler's checks. I don't even know if they still have traveler's checks, but traveler's checks. And there was a sign said, you know, with the credit card, for whatever reasons, the man would not take my American Express credit card. So I pulled out my visa card and he wouldn't take my visa card. So then I pulled out my traveler's checks. He said, we don't take checks. Now this was, these were traveler's checks, this was money. I had a $10 bill, I'll never forget this as long as I live. And uh, he said, uh, uh, the bill for my wife at the time, uh, Fonny's mother, Fonny and myself was like $9.95 and I had a $10 bill. That was all that, and I always remember that. Um, but even before that, I've always kept cash, I, you know, and I've told my daughter, you keep six months worth of cash always. For example, I had three safes in my house. Uh, I put some of my clients' stuff there, too, uh, things I didn't want other lawyers to be, I mean, because you're always in a firm, and I knew that there were special conditions, so some of my clients' things I would bring home, put them in the safe, but I've always kept safes. And as a matter of fact, I gave my daughter uh, her first cash box and told her, always keep some cash. So is that a yes? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's all I got, Judge. Mr. Durham. No questions. Mr. McDougal. No questions, Thank you. Mr. Rice. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Gillen. It's still morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Good morning, Counsel. How are you? Just fine. Just a few questions following up. Uh, when uh, you were talking about when you learned about uh, Mr. Wade and, and your daughter, correct? Correct. Now, did, did your daughter tell you in around October of 2022 that she had gone on a Caribbean cruise with Mr. Wade to uh, the uh, Bahamas? The answer is, I knew that my daughter had gone, but I did not know who she went with or what the circumstances were. So I knew that she had gone out of town, but I didn't know with whom. I see. And did she tell you uh, in November of 2022 that she had gone to Aruba uh, and stayed at a uh, the Hyatt Regency resort there in Aruba for three <coughs> days? With Mr. Wade, did she tell you the, that? The, the answer was again. I knew she went out of town. I didn't even know where she went. I knew she was going out of town. She told me she was going out of town. I think she might have said she's going out of the country or something. She'd be gone. But other than that, that was all. Okay. And did she tell you uh, in March of, of uh, 2023 that she was going to Belize for several days with Mr. Wade? Uh, the uh, same answer that uh, I knew she she would tell me she was going out of town. Uh, and uh, she may or may not have told me where she was going, but she'd be gone for a couple of days. Okay. Now, in 2023, you were, uh, you were uh, in many days, you would be out in California, correct? Some days I'd be in California, correct. Okay. Well, did she tell you uh, in May of 2023 that she was traveling to, the, to Napa Valley with Mr. Wade, so maybe y'all could see each other when she visited California with Mr. Wade? Uh, the answer is no. And so the first time that you ever met Mr. Wade or learned about Mr. Wade, uh, to your recollection, was in 2023? That's correct. Uh, that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Kajuroff. On Zoom. Yes, Your Honor, just a couple quick questions. Good morning, sir. I know I can't see you. I can't see you either, but... Uh, we can take a moment. We can, good morning, Counsel. We can take a moment. Uh, let's just pause, see if we can change the screens to show Mr. Kajuroff. We need Your Honor, to... I'm on a uh, 
I'm on a phone, so it's kind of difficult. Can you turn your screen on, though? I'm trying to. Just to hold one more moment. All right, there we go. You can proceed, Mr. Kucherov. Uh, sir, you seem to know about the issue of cash in this transaction. You said it was a black thing. How did you know that the cash was going to be an issue in this testimony? Because I was asked for it, and I was prepped by the lawyers, and they asked me about it. Uh, <laughs> what else? And, and did you speak with Mr. Wade about your testimony? No. Did you speak with your daughter about your testimony? She may have been present when the lawyers were. I just, I, I really don't remember. If Mr. Wade and your daughter were dating, you wouldn't have known that unless your daughter told you. What are you, I, I'm, maybe I'm not understanding your question, counsel. So maybe you want to restate. What, what, what is it that you're asking me? Yeah, if it wasn't clear, I can re-ask the question. I'll, I'll rephrase yeah, it. Yeah, right, yeah. Mr. Wade, do. if Mr. Wade and your daughter were dating, you wouldn't have known that unless your daughter told you. I did not know that they were dating. And when were you talking about the it. cash? I didn't know that, uh, I, I don't know what you're, what you're asking me. What I told my child from the time she was a child is always have some money always have some money if you go on a date so that people don't try to stick you and you want to leave whoever always keep some cash okay mr floyd i i you answered the question that the attorney has prepped you for that so that's all i wanted to know anything else mr sheriff <clears throat> that's it your honor all right uh, mr cromwell no questions your honor mr abadi you, your honor mr. uh mr floyd now, it wasn't common for your daughter to confide in you about her romantic life at all. No, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I didn't, I haven't confided in her about mine before when I had <laughs> one, okay? Hate him. <laughs> and you wouldn't have known about her boyfriend, the district. Hey, guy. Debs. Is that an objection? Uh, I think that might have just been a still off mute. Okay. Let's, let's keep going. Now, uh, you wouldn't have known about her boyfriend, uh, the disc jockey, had you not been living with her, correct? That's correct. Uh, I'll allow uh, it. Overruled. I have nothing further. Did he, did he answer the question? He did. <laughs> he said that's correct. All right. By show of hands, any uh, redirect on those points only. Okay. Ms. Merchant. Yes. Um, I just want to know when, when you were prepped by the lawyers, when this prep session was. I just got off the plane on, I get, what was it, Tuesday night? I think I was probably drooling at the mouth. I was so tired. I, so it must have been, I got in Wednesday. It must have been Wednesday. Okay. And um, did you talk about any of the testimony from yesterday or watch any <clears throat> news reports or anything like that? Oh, absolutely. Google, you can't cut the TV on without seeing this. The first, first thing, and I listen to conservative radio a lot, and, you know, last night for five hours, all they talked about was this case. So you were aware of what the testimony your daughter gave yesterday was? Yeah, I, I mean, how could, I mean, unless you don't cut the radio on, unless you don't cut the television on, unless you don't read the AJC or any other, the New York Times or whatever, which I do every day, yeah, of course. Um, so is it fair to say nobody instructed you that you were under the rule of sequestration? Right, and I'm, I, I'm not under subpoena either. Thank you. All right, anything else? Seeing and hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. Thank you very much, Your Honor. It's a pleasure to appear in front of you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Ms. 